Hi everyone, today it was uh, raining heavily from the morning and suddenly it was sunshine. So I hope that if I could uh, see a rainbow, so I came to the roof, and, but actually no luck. So the question comes into the mind while we are thinking about rainbow is colors, seven colors, whip jewel and all. So colors are of two types, one is uh, pigment type, like normal what you see in paints and uh, skin melanin and everything. And another is structural colors. So if I ask you like what is the uh, similarity between uh, uh, my spectacles, CD grating, a butterfly and a spider legs. Okay, welcome to Science in a Cup and today we will explore about photonic crystals and structural colors. So uh, after I got my first fellowship, so I was pretty excited and I thought that I would change my spectacle color glass. So uh, I went to the shop and told them to give me anti-reflection and blue light filter. When I went to bring the spectacles from the shopkeeper, I saw that it is it looks really like a normal spectacle, just a normal glass and everything. So I was little bit worried and I asked the shopkeeper, how do I know that it is a blue light filter? So he smiled and took a pen type of thing. So he showed me the pen and said this is a blue light source. So this is a pen like that. So once I saw the pen and its uh, label, I know that it is a 405 nanometer laser. But to him it was a blue light source. And what he said was like this. Can you see the intensity of light or the brightness of light in the paper? I said yes, I can see. Now what happens, now see what happens if I put the spectacles in between these two means the paper. So he took my spectacles and put the laser light on the spectacles and told, told me can you see the brightness right now in the paper. I said yes it is reduced. Look, that's it. Hence proof that it blocks blue light. So he again showed me like this. See blue. See the brightness. I said yes and he put the spectacles in between. Now see the brightness. Yes. So, so he smiled and said again. Hence, it's proved it blocks blue light. So, I was pretty amazed by this experiment. Then, uh, what I did, I went to this online sources and bought this 405 nanometer laser. So, I came back and I have this uh, board clip which I used to uh, clip on my paintings to the cardboard. So, actually, it is made of a fluorescent dye. The plastic is mixed with fluorescent dye. And when I hit it with a laser, 405, excite it with 405, this is a light which I get, a greenish light. Now, if I put the spectacles in between the sources, you will see, this is what I get. So, yes, it blocks the light. But the question comes, how? Here, I have a wave. It is a wave crest and it is a wave trough. The distance between two wave crest is called wavelength. So here I have another wave and here is another one. When these two waves meet in such a way such that its crest line up together it is called constructive interference and the resulting wave has a higher amplitude means more brightness, more light. Here I have another wave and you can see this is the second one. When the crest of one wave meets the trough of another, we get a result called destructive interference. Hence, it is of lower amplitude or we can say darkness or no light. So we have done this crash course of interference and this is the main thing which we need in the whole video. So in 1886, Lord Raleigh was working with optical glasses and optical glasses at that time used to develop tarnish on its surface with age. It was because of due to some chemical reaction with the environment. Now Raleigh tested some old slightly tarnished pieces of glass and found to his surprise that they transmitted more light than the new clean pieces. This actually the tarnish replaces the air glass interference interface with two 
interfaces an air tarnish interface and a tarnish glass interface so this was this could be taken as an example of 1d photonic crystal so what happens this anti reflection coating and this blue light filter which our opticians recommend they are actually used to decrease reflection and hence because it decreases reflection so you what it does is that it increases the cosmetic appearance of the lenses you cannot see the in the picture at least you cannot see the picture of the photographer taking the photograph and this lenses also reduce glare so eliminating this reflection allows slightly more light to pass through producing a slight increase in contrast and visual acuity so this anti reflection coating are also used in telescopes other microscope objectives etc now this anti reflection coating or blue light filter works on the principle of interference which we discussed earlier these are also called dichroic filters and they work by reflecting unwanted wavelength while transmitting the desired portion of the spectrum so this is achieved by adding layer after layer or multiple layers of varying refractive index to exploit the interference nature of light waves in interference filters light traveling from a lower index material will reflect off a higher index material only light of a certain angle and wavelength will constructively interfere with the incoming beam and pass through the material while all other lights while the all other lights will destructively interfere and reflect off the material so this layer upon layer structure is also called a photonic crystal now the question comes what is a photonic crystal so a photonic crystal is a periodic optical nanostructure that affects the motion of photons that is light suppose you are the light and you are walking in a road filled with mud so naturally it will slow you down so that means in terms of optics higher refractive index and suppose you are on a smooth concrete road so you will walk faster so that is low refractive index so this photonic crystal is a periodic arrangement of high and low refractive index materials meaning muddy roads and concrete roads now the question comes how to manufacture this photonic crystal like one dimensional photonic crystal where there is layer after layer such that i get this anti reflection coating or blue light filter or any other wavelength filter maybe 632 532 filter notch filter bandpass filter so they are actually made by either sputtering or coating through evaporation or by solgel technique so for example thin film coatings are created by depositing dielectric and material metallic materials such as there is tantalum pentoxide aluminum oxide half mium oxide and in order to maximize or minimize this interference there are also lambda by 4 optical thickness or quarter wave optical thickness or lambda by 2 optical thickness or half wave optical thickness of the wavelength of the light in, used in this application this thin film layers alternate between high index of refraction and low index of refraction thereby inducing the interference effect needed we should keep in mind like while coating with solgel or anything for manufacturing or making one d photonic crystal is that the layer should be uniform because one it gives you the best result or desired result which you want and second while stacking up layer after layer if it is not uniform there may be cracks and which is undesirable now how to know what will be the thickness of this layer the thickness of this layer is lambda by 4 into the refractive index of the material you are coating for silicon it is different titanium it is different and etc etc it is different refractive index and thickness for different material so that is what will be the thickness of the layer now suppose you have one layer now when you are coating with a sol gel uh, you will not get your desired thickness so after coating once you need to know what is the thickness of that individual layer and by knowing the thickness of the individual layer you can calculate how many dips you have to do to get that desired thickness result so another thing i want to mention is because the video started with structural colors 
I also wanted to mention about soap bubbles and the colorful patches which you see in the street after heavy rain because of the oil layer formed over water in those patches. In soap bubbles and these colorful patches, you can see the phenomenon of interference which is really fascinating and you can yourself try this soap bubble experiment at your home. So if you did not fall asleep, congratulations, you are really a tough bird. So I'll end the video here. Uh, so to wrap up, it was 1D, about 1D photonic crystal. Now there is 2D and 3D photonic crystal, which the science behind it actually explains like why peacock feathers has colors, why and some monarch butterflies or some butterflies, morpho butterflies has this iridescent means very nice blue color. And even there are some paints, uh, some cars, uh, some prototype paints, which actually changes its color as the angle. So it's really very interesting. And right now we'll see some bloopers and some butterflies and some colors. And we'll end the video here. Thank you and sorry for boring. If you cannot get a rainbow, you make a rainbow. You are still there? Okay, uh, so the next video will be on 2D and 3D photonic crystal. And that's it for now. Thanks, enjoy.